thing into three ways again, right? So notice that this 1.02 G1 doesn't have to fully go into G3. It can be, you know, split in three ways or one way or whatever it is that as a sum total, Excel deems fit. Now, one more question perhaps is, why don't we um, have 1.0075 squared, you know, something like that times L1? Or, you know, the, usually we do compound interest that way, right? We don't have to because the L, the sequence of L1, L2, L3, they live from month to month. So whatever was compounded into L1 and left over, because once you have the compound interest, it, part of it may go into G1, uh, C2 or G2. And the, only the leftover will go into L2, you see. So there is no uh, a, a strict telling of tracing of the dollar from L1 to L2 to L3. There's no such thing, right? So so uh, in, in certain months, for example, G2, Excel may decide to have fully invested into G2 and L C2 and nothing into L2. Maybe because G1 will come in later on, right? So, so this part is okay. There's no need to link by compound interest or whatever. Remember, compound, compounding is not linear. So think linearly from month to month, right? We build on what is left over. And if it so happens that you cannot do that, you have to do compounding directly from month one, think of introducing more decision variables midway through, right? So that you are able to build step by step in a linear fashion. Every step to the next time step, is a line, it's linear. And that's how you can use linear programming. So if you go, go, uh, go from the start to compound into the fifth month, you know, something like that, raising it to the power of five, you're not thinking linearly and because you are lacking decision variables to help you step through halfway. So think of introducing more time-based variables like G123, okay? And to be careful and consistent again, right? So C and C. Uh, at the start of the fourth month, we have same thing, an equal sign. And on the left-hand side is to be split into G4, C4, L4. We understand that. But what is new will be on the right-hand side, money available, right? So the liquid amount plus interest from L3 at the start of fourth month, G2 which was invested at the start of the second month will now be available, right? It flashes back into our bank account. C1, which was invested at the start of the first month, you can tell that from the suffix one here, will now come back after a three month interval to allow us to consider splitting into the start of the fourth month investment. All right, so that comes with 6% interest. So in this manner, we are able to tell our model that the C1 actually takes three months to mature, G1, G2, they, take, they took two months to mature, and all the L's take one month to mature. Now, quick example. Suppose G1, all right, we had G1 here, right? Suppose G1 was actually two month bond, but the following month, government bond, uh, they decided to issue a three month bond. So G2 takes three months to mature. G2 takes three months to mature. In that case, G2 will not be available at the start of the fourth month, but rather at the start of the fifth month, which is outside our planning horizon. That's fine, but then in that case, we would then have to take out this term to tell our model that G1 was two month duration, yes, but G2, special case, three month duration. So we can still express it with ease. Furthermore, it is very systematic. We're not creating something awkward on the fly. We just follow through with the careful and consistent use of the suffixes, and that would do. Okay, so we tell the model time by careful and consistently, uh, cons consistent use of the suffix indices. Okay, and we are very precise with the quantity uh, defined in the decision variable. It's at the start of the fat month, not any day you choose in between, right? So very, very clear about that. All these uh, mechanisms allow us to then impart into the model what we actually desire in terms of real time of the investments. Now, finally, there was a part where they say that 
at the at the end of the investment, which means at the end of the the four month planning, we must have ten million, right? Now remember one of the rules about time. End of the previous month, end of fourth month is the start of the fifth month, right? So it's the start of the fifth month. You can think of it as if we if we had available G five C five, if we had to plan for amount of investments, right? For G five C five and L five then the right hand side would have to be an expression telling us the money available at the start of the fifth month or at the end of the fourth month right and think about it that would be exactly this isn't it it's the money left over in liquid form in l4 plus interest g3 right plus two percent c2 plus two percent so we might have written something like that but we don't really want to know how much to invest in the fifth month, uh, start of fifth month for government construction liquid. We, that's outside our responsibility, right? So instead of doing that, and this, since it's equal to this expression, we might as well directly say this expression has to be at least 10 million. Yeah. So it is not to say something like we have 10 million injection in the fifth month. Huh? This is greater equal to. The real life is performance requirement. We need this expression to be at least 10 million. So do that and the last part about uh, limiting the exposure of up to 8 million at all times right in construction construction bond uh, construction loans and government bonds the G's will have to be at any time that we have investment in G's less than equal to 8 million now we cannot we cannot add G1234 all the time Okay, this is this G one just refers to the first month. First month, how much is invested? G one. If that's zero, that's fine, right? But if it is non-zero, it better be less than equal to eight million. In the second month, in the second month, now we are imagining the real time in the investment horizon, right? Investment real time. In the when it goes into second month, the exposure, the amount of investment into government bonds will be G one and G two. You would not include G3 and G4. G3, G4 could be 5 million and 10 million, but you cannot add them because they haven't happened in the investment time yet. Right? When it comes to the third month, right, G1 would have matured and sort of uh, be de exposed. It, it has come back to us, while G2 still has the second of the two month uh, investment duration, plus our new investment into uh, government bond in at the start of the third month so total exposure g2 plus g3 so now you see the pattern so we just keep on rolling the indices right g3 plus g4 and if you have a well, one year planning horizon you'll be g4 plus g5 g5 plus g6 and you get the idea so we just need to reason out a few uh, over maybe a two or three time intervals we get a hang of it then we can observe some pattern the pattern has to be there because the time is connected it doesn't jump around so the two and the threes must be together three and the fours you know something like that so it is not that complicated if you are able to uh, reason out things yeah and then start to observe some interesting numerical patterns coming out so for the same reason we see that um, first month we have only c1 second month c1 plus c2 but it takes longer for c to mature right so in the third month c1 is still in in the water c2 and the fresh c3 investment but in the fourth month c1 disappears so if we count vertically uh, c1 actually occurs three times right uh, kind of representing the three month investment horizon so it makes sense finally non-negativity for all the decision variables which is easy so if we implement that in uh, Excel. All right, then at the click of the solver button, it tells us to uh, basically invest a lot, a lot, maximum, a uh, maximum amount for government bond, right? Because it's stable and we can invest up to eight million. Uh, nothing. This this time ten to the power of negative ten is basically saying zero. So Excel way of uh, unable to being round down to rounded down to zero. So. So zero, nothing in government bond because total exposure, eight million, right? 
um, and then because of the interests coming in, the numbers start to veer off the million figure, and so we can understand that. And a lot of money invested in the construction loan, uh, C four also because it's giving us six percent. Nice, right? And finally, uh, what is important here is also that total cost. Ah, uh, no, sorry. In this case, our total accrued interest is going to be one point four to nine million, and guaranteed to be no higher. So if you ever doubt that you can do better job, uh, that Excel is not doing a good work because you have 10 years of experience and you can uh, switch around the figures and do better than Excel and Solver, don't waste your time because unless you um, messed up the model, this is guaranteed to be the most profit. You can shuffle around the investment numbers, but you cannot get higher interest accrued interest while still satisfying all the constraints guaranteed right guaranteed so this is how powerful a model can be if we can relate properly our our investment concerns our timing concerns and all the parameters correctly into the model so please use that a lot a lot